Hello there. Thanks for joining us. I'm really glad you did because today we're going to be creating this fantastic dragon. And I'm going to be sculpting a dragon due to a request I got from Alex Morgan, who's 13 years old and loves sculpture. But before I get started, if you're not there now, then I urge you to come over to Montmart.net where we have our Montmart TV and it's just cram packed full of awesome lessons. We also have our Facebook attached to that and our Creative Connection. And if you join our Creative Connection, then we'll send you a fantastic project each week, as well as lots of other goodies. So, let's build a dragon. So, I want this dragon to be fairly simple. So, I've drawn up a crouching dragon design, and this will negate the use of an armature. We will be using an old paintbrush handle to hold up the head of our dragon. And this is an old number four gesso brush. I'll be using one and a half, two kilogram packets of terracotta air hardening clay for this project. So cut one in half, then cut that in half, lay them down side by side and blend them together. So once you've joined those together, we can now put on that brush handle that's going to hold up our dragon's head and we'll lay her about there. We can then cut a hole in the clay with a fettling knife. You can use a steak knife for this purpose and remember to be careful. Cut the shape to the required size, remove the clay like this, place the brush handle in and build clay around the handle to a thickness of two centimeters. The thing to remember with this is to make sure there is no air between the clay and the handle. Then take a small handful of clay and fashion it into an egg shape about this size and attach it to the top of the neck, then smooth it in. The body here is a quarter of a block placed on the base and smoothed into the neck. There is no descriptive name that I could give to this blob, just try to emulate this sort of shape. So that should do it for the body. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I can refine it later. The next important element is the tail. So take ooh, about that much and roll a conical tube. This is pretty easy. You just roll it with your hand at a sort of an angle and move it outwards, then cut it at 20 centimeters. Once we have our dragon's tail, it's quite easy to just connect it to the body and wrap it around. We can then smooth it onto the body. Create this blend so the tail makes a smooth transition from the body. So now for the back leg. Now I say back leg because there's only one of them. Because our dragon is lying down crouching, he's laying on one, so we just need one here. If you refer to the PDF, you will get some guidance in where to position it. But I'll show you how to make it now. Take one piece of clay, about this size, and make another conical tube. The thing with sculpture is to break things into simple shapes and then refine them. Flatten one end and then the other at a different angle. Take a sharp flat tool and cut two wedges to create three toes. So now that we have our dragon's leg, we need to bend it into a S shape like that. Remove the tail. We can then apply it like so. Once we have that on, we can apply the front legs. And again with the rolling, make sure these are about the same size as the previous legs. Now, air dry clay is made up with elements that really speed up its drying. And while this is generally favored, it's a good habit to get into controlling this drying constantly. Basically, we just twist them up and that's an arm there. So I'll just do it in camera here so you can see. I'm just going to lay that up. 
we can make them longer or uh, shorter, we can cut them back. I just want to, that's one. You'll notice I've put the arm right up to the shoulder. This will suggest some scapulars or shoulder blades. I then neatly cross them. So everything has been brought up to the same smooth level, basically with the flat part of the tools and water. So now let's start detailing and let's start on our friend's head. Here's another tip. Before I detail, I soften the clay with a wet brush. So first in goes the eye placement, then the cheekbone, a nostril. I can then excavate the eye socket. I fashion two eyelids, remove the eyeball area and smooth all the surfaces. I can then suggest the pupil with the sharp point. Now I create two conical shaped tubes about four centimetres long. Push in a toothpick and attach it to the head. I then smooth it into that head, create a little flat disc pinch both ends and then smooth it onto the side of the head. My dragon now has an ear. Next I create a waddle for my friend, smooth it in then recreate the steps for the other side of the head. Well, this is coming along really nicely. Now let's move on to the hands and I'm going to try and simplify these a little bit. So uh, let's create some hands for our dragon. Using my sharp flat, I create three cut marks to give me four talons. I do this on both hands and spread them and remove clay from either side to suggest an acute tip. I have made my dragon's hands and arms a little larger, but as this is a fantasy creature, I think there is enough creative license to get away with it. Once the fingers are positioned to my liking, I refine them a bit more to suggest underlying bone. Things like crevices around the knuckles and stuff. Now, I think I'll leave the arms and the hands like that. I could keep refining them, but I think that's fine. Let's move on. The next thing is to create some wings for our dragon, because what would a dragon be without wings? And because our friend is quite nonchalantly relaxing, his wings are going to be folded, out, uh, folded up. So create another tube like this and roll it in a slightly conical shape. Create four grooves in it, then press them flat and cut the tube in half. Wings are generally depicted as very large, thin, fragile surfaces and not easily created in a three-dimensional sense. And as my friend is at rest, it seems plausible that they might fold up and rest like this. Once they are smoothed in, I trim them to size and cross them at the end. Now that our wings are smoothed in, we can create some fin adornments down the spine and down the tail, tail. And these are basically just a whole series of little triangles. So create the shapes and then smooth them on. To ensure of a good bond, I create a series of crisscross marks down the spine and then run my brush down the area and apply my fins. I then smooth them in at the base. The fins get smaller as they move down to the tail, but to give you an idea, I've got 18 fins on my dragon. Well, how fun was that? And I really hope you enjoyed the lesson, Alex, and I hope you're inspired to create your own dragon. Due to the elements, it can be created simply or it can be made to be more intricate. If you haven't already joined, then don't forget to subscribe to our Creative Connection. And remember to keep on creating. See you next time.